friends and subscribers. We're entering into the first week of July 2012 and things are heating up this summer both here in the Far East and at home. Uh, what's in the news today? What's going on in the big, big red China? Well, rail line promises to be new Silk Road. This uh, proposed rail line uh, extension and uh, connecting points, including land bridges, are designed to bring uh, goods from the West, auto components, wine, luxury items, uh, recycled materials, and raw uh, goods to the Far East and from the Far East, IT, electrical products, auto parts, steel, and other uh, metals. And uh, basically, um, one of the key players in this rail line that's uh, proposed is uh, Chongqing, China, which is... Uh, close to uh, Xi'an, it's just to the south of Xi'an. And Chongqing has become, uh, quite quickly actually, a IT build powerhouse. Companies like HP are investing a lot of money there and the labor is very cheap, um, quite skilled because uh, there's some good education centers in Chongqing and people um, are actually migrating to a center point in China. Um, where they're building out the IT infrastructure and um, uh, trying to get goods from here to here and vice versa. One way to do that is with uh, rail and uh, they certainly have um, the ambition to do so. So uh, how, does, how is this significant really? It's not only about products, it has a lot to do with labor. And uh, if you read the work of uh, Reinhardt, you'll key into kind of what's going on with that and what has been going on over the past uh, hundreds of years and even thousands of years. Um, this rail line basically brings the cost of labor down uh, even lower than, than what it is um, currently between these two um, land masses. Um, to tie into that, let's go out to the next page here in uh, China Daily newspaper. Dragon baby boom in Big Apple. Chinese women flock to New York to have babies with U.S. citizenship. Now this trend is something that we're going to see more and more of um, before it was Hong Kong in Taiwan. Now it's the United States. And why? Because uh, Chinese have more expendable income. They want their children to have dual citizenship. Um, and that's significant because for most Americans that now um, are jobless or are having trouble finding jobs or complain about the part-time jobs that they have, don't worry. Uh, there'll be a whole new um, class of uh, Chinese uh, citizens with U.S. passports to take those jobs. And um, the numbers um, don't lie in this. Um, New York, for pregnant visitors, the hospitals are actually catering to them. Um, the cheapest is 90,000 yuan, about $14,000, while the most expensive package for um, visitors to America to have uh, uh, their care is 800,000 yuan, um, and that takes care of everything. Um, one company says, our package, our package services usually include four-month room rent, three daily meals, and monthly car rental for parental examination. We also help with taking care of the baby so new moms can get more time to recover during the one-month postpartum period. Okay, so that's significant. Um, these are uh, dragon babies. Um, with dual citizenship, uh, another trend to watch. Um, that ties me in to the next article. This is in Global Times, which is uh, one of my more favorite publications uh, in English in, in, in the Far East. Evolving attitudes to foreigners. Now this is a trend that I felt on the street actually. More and more foreigners are getting the cold shoulder as China um, evolves with their economy and also uh, evolves with their social um, improvements. Um, 
the government has, in the past couple of months, made it public that they're cracking down on foreigners that have overstayed their visa. And they're doing so uh, in Gestapo-like fashion. They're entering hotels, uh, apartments, and other checkpoints such as rail stations to check passports and visa information for foreigners. Now, I've never been checked myself, but um, I've, I've noticed a different attitude uh, here um, of Chinese citizens towards foreigners, and that has to do partly with the government policy, but also with the fact that there's been several incidents, incidents here where um, foreigners have gotten into a little bit of trouble um, and uh, they don't take that lightly because um, what I've told my friends for a number of years is that the Chinese have what's called a hive mind or a hive mentality where um, they pick up on things and it just kind of it just kind of uh, balloons into being you know the consensus for the entire population even when uh, some of these events need to be critically thought of uh, by each individual Chinese. Um, they're still in that kind of propaganda mode where they, they believe what they're being sold um, by their school system, their government, etc. That's to be expected, but we're going to see social unrest and we're going to see big changes in the way people view themselves and the world as uh, you know, China continues to grow and kind of outgrow their old communist system. Um, on a daily basis, I see it here, not just with money and markets, but also uh, with, with social issues, where the old system and the new system, they're both working at the same time, but they're clashing, and there's, there's a conflict there. Um, you know, you can no longer say, well, we can or can't do this because of policy, policy, policy. Well, China, on one hand, is, has been opening up, and on the other hand, they're saying that, you know, we have to stick to policy, and uh, we're not going to um, compromise. And I, I don't think it's possible for, for China, their currency, and their population to, to uh, you know, continue to progress without some kind of compromise. So, interesting to see that. A uh, big matter of... Uh, National Pride is the first manual docking success for China's space uh, trio. Three astronauts were able to dock uh, the space station. And um, so that's, that's significant. The space race has been on and it's going to continue to uh, balloon and, and evolve into, into something more. Um, other than that, really, there's not a whole lot more that I want to, I guess, emphasize. Credit Suisse cuts China's GDP outlook. Uh, we knew this was coming. Uh, the growth this year to 7.7%, and um, that is significantly down from the 8 plus percent and even 9.1% that was cited by some experts here uh, last year coming into 2012. So, yeah, we'll see a slowdown. Um, they, they, won't, uh, they won't let us slow down to much more than maybe seven as a matter of saving face <laughs> and the government ha here has a has a real uh, uh, knack for saving face and doing whatever it takes to make things look uh, a bit more kosher than, than what they actually are and if they've got to change rates or they have to print more money or just simply lie about the statistics they certainly will um, it's the same uh, song and dance that we get from the United States government. So that's about it. Uh, I want to, uh, I guess, do these updates when I see something worth uh, telling you about, hopefully on a monthly basis. So um, thanks a lot for watching.